I will say at the outset is in terms of best practices for paid ads, what I'm not going to go into in the next few minutes is I'm not going to go into little tactical changes. Oh, you should set your bids to this and you should use this type of ad, things like that, because I find that's too granular and it doesn't help enough people in terms of, I don't know what your marketing objectives are. I don't know what you're currently doing. So rather than make it too granular and not apply to anybody, I've made it a little more broad. And what I'm going to be talking about is best practices in terms of how you should approach spending, spending money online to, to effectively buy ads. So with that, into things. So for anybody who wasn't here last week, as Eli said, I'm Matt Whalen. I'm a digital marketer. I've worked in ad agencies and consultancies for uh, going on about 10 years now. I'm really passionate about performance. I think that'll show through over the next few slides. By that, what gets me up in the morning in terms of the work that I do is trying to get the best quality results for, for you and my clients through constantly analyzing and optimizing the, our approach to marketing and what we're trying to do. I'm also a uh, pinball enthusiast. That's neither here nor there, but I thought it would be nice to have a little personal touch in this. And I'm not a medical professional. This whole presentation is through the lens of visiting your doctor for a checkup. So quick recap. So very much your health, even if you think things are pretty good, you're feeling good, no complaints to speak of. Every once in a while, it does make sense to still go to the doctor and get up just to make sure that there's nothing you, you haven't thought of or nothing you can't see. But before the doctor can make any kind of diagnosis, they do, they perform clinical discovery. And that is the, the through line for these two presentations that I've given so far. Last week, we talked about the visual examination, looking at how you are set up, how your marketing is set up for your website, investigative questions, trying to learn more about what it is what it is you're trying to do. And then today is the third part of that, which is what I call current medications, which is, again, if we're approaching this from the analogy of health, if the analytics and data measurement of your, I'll say website, but this could be app, this could be business in general or the nonprofit in general, current medications are, you know, what are you doing? What are you taking to enhance performance or alleviate problems? So we went over a couple of questions last week, and I want to reiterate these because they're going to be important for what I'm going to be talking about. And that's, these are questions that you should ask yourself or ask your team. The next time you're talking about talking about marketing, it depends on obviously the size of your team, but maybe you're a team of one, maybe you're part of a larger team. So the first question is, how do your clients slash donors, I'm keeping this broad, how do they find your website today? It's an important question. Because at the end of the day, one of the key objectives that digital marketing um, in all its forms can help you achieve is it can help people find you. And that can also mean different things. That could mean people who, are, who know about you, it can help them find you. But it can also mean people who don't know about you, it help, marketing can help, or ads I should say, can help people find you. And that's, that can be if I have a problem or a need or something like that, something that you service and part of a community that you help. Helping me connect with you is a key part of what marketing can do. So that's a really important question to ask yourself. And if you don't know the answer to that, I urge you to look up the recording for last week where I talked a little bit more about data and analytics in terms of helping to answer this question and why this question is so important. The second question is, are you satisfied with how many leads slash donations your website generated last quarter? And if this, if, if leads or donations don't apply to you, because they don't necessarily apply to us all, I want you to replace this question with, are you satisfied with the results that your website generated last quarter? So that could mean anything. Let's stick to what I have here for the examples for now. You've got, maybe you try to solicit donations for your nonprofit or your charity through your website. And the first question I would ask if somebody approached me or if I was having a prospect call with someone like yourself, I would say, how much, how many donations do you get through your website today? And that over time. So last month, last quarter, last year, whatever. And are you satisfied with that number? Are you trying to grow that number? Are you fine with that? What's the answer to that? And this is very similar to the question I just asked, which is how people find you. This really is getting into the meat of it in terms of what does your website do? And is it accomplishing that goal? So this could also mean rather than donations, rather than looking inwards, we can be 
looking outwards, which is you know, whatever the stated goal or objective or mission statement of our nonprofit or our charity is, how does the website contribute to that? So an example might be you offer, I think I used this last week, you offer legal services to people who lack the access to that normally. And so you have things like PDF downloads of things like tenants' rights and things of that nature. Were people able to find those, find those resources? Did they download them, et cetera, et cetera. So this, is, this can be measurement of any of those things. And then this third one is tougher to answer, but I think it's a good thought starter. And that's how does your website contribute to your overall goals? And again, that ties very closely to the question I just asked just a second ago, which is, are you satisfied with how many results your website generated last quarter? And this one is really important in terms of what does your website do? What is its main function? And this might seem really obvious. And some of you probably are like, I know what it does. It does this easy, easy question. I don't even know why he would ask that question, but you'd be surprised with how many businesses and nonprofits I talk to that can't really answer this question in a succinct way. They'll still give a longer winded answer. That's, oh, it's for this and this and this. And it's okay. Your website can definitely serve multiple functions, but at the end of the day, you really should be able to boil it down. Of Our website does this or our website does these two things. Those are the two overarching goals that everything goes into. So for, for a for-profit business, that might be our website is to, is to help us sell more shoes, or our website is to help generate leads for our sales team so that we can, inc- inc- we can inc- continue to grow revenue and grow our business, something like that. And for a nonprofit, it could be something like I mentioned before, it's we want to make these legal services accessible to communities who might be underserved. And so that could be the main stated objective, or it could be that. And we also want people who care about our cause to be able to easily donate. And we want to be able to grow the size of our nonprofit and do more the good thing that we're trying to do by raising more money. So it could be something like that. A key component to keep in mind, the reason why I ask all of that before we even get started talking about ads and best practices is it's really important, as I might've mentioned last week, it's really important before you spend a single dollar on any ad online or offline, it's what do you want that dollar to turn into? Again, if you were a for-profit business, Everything is based around profit. So it's if I'm spending $5,000 on ads this month, hopefully I'm generating more than $5,000 worth of revenue from those adverts, from those ads. So maybe that's straight away, it's transactional. So it's a return on ad spend directly, or maybe it's I'm driving demand growth. And then somewhere down the line, I'm going to recoup that those costs, something like that. For us, obviously, these calculations are a bit different. Nonprofits don't work the same way. But still, it's what do we want the ads to do? And how are we going to measure the success or, I won't say failure, the success or lack of success of a particular campaign or, or that particular objective? Really important for us to decide that before we ever spend a single dollar Otherwise, we run into uh, a situation that I'm going to cover in a few minutes. We're, now we're getting into the list of current medications to, to keep my analogy going of let's talk about the things that we're doing to enhance performance or to fix issues. So as you'll have noticed, I like to do a really interrogatory style of presentation. More questions to ask yourself that is going to help us boil these thoughts down into an idea that we can take forward once this presentation is over. And the first is, where's your marketing budget being spent today? So obviously I focus on digital ads um, and digital marketing. I don't touch any traditional ads. Uh, For example, I don't do billboards. I don't do radio. I don't do TV. I don't do bus ads. I don't do skywriting, nothing like that. Nothing against those, those mediums, but that's just not where I focus my expertise. And also I like to do things where I can directly measure results. Again, not to say that's necessarily better. For example, if you buy a billboard, it's really hard to measure what that billboard does for your business directly. It's attribution is a really tough problem. Just because a a Facebook ad, for example, you can measure exactly what that Facebook ad does, doesn't make the Facebook ad better. It just makes it more, more measurable. But to answer this question, where's your marketing budget being spent today? Um, Again, for some of you, you're saying, I know exactly where it's being spent, or I don't have a marketing budget or whatever, but this is a really important question to answer honestly in terms of 
what are we doing on, this can be quarterly or monthly or yearly, any kind of time period, but where are we spending our marketing budget today and putting dollar values by those. It's really important to, to take that forward to then decide if we want to make changes to that. The second question is, and this one's a lot tougher, and that's how much of that spend would you consider waste? What percentage would you consider waste? And the immediate reaction of most people is 0%. None of it's wasted. It's all premium performance marketing stuff. For all of us, that's pretty much going to be not true. Waste is something that unfortunately is part and parcel of marketing, whether it's in my opinion, whether it's traditional or digital, there's always going to be some level of waste. How do we define waste could be an ad impression that you paid for? An impression might be very cheap, but an impression you paid for that a user didn't even really see. It could be maybe the ad loaded, but their browser wasn't, they didn't scroll down far enough, or it could be an impression loaded, but they just scrolled past too quickly, or it could even be the impossible to measure an impression uh, and a user was served with an impression and they just didn't look at the ad. And that's something that we can't control. And all of those things I would consider waste can also be defined in lots of other ways too. For example, did you target the right content or the right users or, or the right behavior or that can go on and on in terms of, did you get your message in front of, did you give your message the, the best chance it could to reach the right people? If you don't, that could be considered waste. We can also talk about really specific examples, like for example, on Google search, Google search ads are something that probably many of you are familiar with and really common thing that I see on Google search for uh, clients, whether it's profit or nonprofit is they think that their Google search campaign is set up to capture all that traffic that, that they think is coming their way. And I dig into it and go, actually, no, you, you weren't capturing the, you weren't bidding on the keywords you thought you were bidding on as an example. So that would be considered waste too. So even if you can't answer this question, it's okay if you can't, but I think it's good to approach this from the perspective of let's audit what we're doing and let's figure out if it's, if it truly makes sense for us. And then this last one is tougher for us in terms of talking about nonprofits, but stick with me for a second. And what is the return on your advertising investments? Again, for most, for example, most of my clients being for-profit businesses, the return on investment is dollars and cents. For us, that might not be the case. Sometimes it is if we are trying to fundraise, obviously we want to raise more funds than we paid in advertising, of course. And we can hopefully advertising can have a, like a multiplicative effect on the amount of money we raise, but return on investment can be the return on investment in terms of what good does it do? So again, I'll call back to my earlier example. If we're trying to provide resources on our website for people who need them, people in the community, underserved communities, what have you, um, did our ads reach the right people? Did they bring them to the website? And did those people get what they needed? So that could be a return on investment. Again, you can't calculate that necessarily in dollars and cents. You can easily break that down into other numbers in terms of we, we strive to offer this particular resource to people. How many downloads did we get? And how much did we pay to promote those that resource, for example? This is obviously very key in terms of, in terms of, deciding what we should do in terms of paid ads or how we should approach our, our paid ad program in general. And I'll give you an example. Um, oftentimes when I'm talking with a, a prospect or a client and I'll say, where are you, where's your marketing budget being spent today? And they'll say something to the effect of, oh, we buy an ad in this magazine or this trade publication or something like that. We buy that every year. We've done it every year for the last 10 years and it's, it's 10,000 bucks a year or something like that. And I'll say, okay, great. What can we attribute to that? What kind of success, what kind of activity can we attribute to that? And obviously we're talking about a magazine or a print publication, and it can be really difficult to answer that question. Oftentimes when we dig into that further, it turns out that, well, that $10,000 a year that we're spending on that, that we just did, because we always did that, we can, there's an opportunity cost to that $10,000. We could have spent that $10,000 somewhere else and gotten a lot, we could have done a lot more good with that $10,000, whether it was raise more money or we could have you know, provided more services. In terms of just talking about clear performance of ads, it's really important for us to look at where our money gets spent and really look critically at what the return is. What do we get back from it? And if we can't measure it, 
directly, like in the case of a magazine, what can we do to maybe to better measure that? Or should we think about something else that we can try? This year in 2022, maybe instead of doing the magazine or trade publication, we try something else and then compare our metrics year over year, for example. That could be something we could do. So going into some common issues, and this will get more to the core of kind of the best practices, very broadly speaking, as I said. So common issue number one is we don't know what we're spending. This is a huge problem. I would hope that this is none of you, but it does happen. And it doesn't mean that you're disorganized or anything like that. It's just that oftentimes different different team members, different departments, different people aren't necessarily talking. So we don't actually know where our marketing dollars are being spent and we don't know exactly what they're being spent on. Whether we don't know what we're spending could mean the dollar amount we don't know what we're spending or the dollar amount or the question could be we don't know where we're spending it. So this was this would be a huge common issue. But again, if, if you're able to comfortably answer that question, you're making notes on your napkin and you're saying, yeah, we spend $15,000 a year and it goes and that gets broken out here. Great, wonderful. Number two, this one's a really common one. So our campaigns were set up by a summer student some time ago. No one has touched them since. Replace summer student with intern, replace summer student with former employee, replace summer student with whomever you want, but it's someone who does not work there anymore or does not serve that role anymore. One of the reasons why I really got interested in what I do earlier, earlier on in my career was that I noticed that one of the problems with, um, this applies mostly to marketing agencies, but one of the things I noticed even in-house at, at, at businesses or at nonprofits is the way that we approach digital marketing is something that we just have to do like table stakes. And we put somebody on that might be junior or like the young person, because they know the technology and stuff like that. This is changing, obviously it's, I'm, I'm getting old. So this is not necessarily the case anymore, but Oftentimes what happens is, for example, I'll, I'll be specific and say like Google search. I actually talked to somebody today that their Google search campaigns, they had run Google search in the past and it was set up by an intern and it didn't work. And so they never tried it again. My question to that person was, how do you know that it was set up properly according to best practices and what was the approach? What was the strategy? None of those questions could be answered. So really what this brings to light is, do you know where the keys to all those ad accounts and things lie? Is it with uh, an ad, uh, a marketing agency you don't work with anymore? Is it with, did, did the accounts get created by an intern or a summer student and we don't know where that is? This is really a re really common issue and getting a handle on everything and bringing it all together under the umbrella of your, of your nonprofit and figuring out, okay, this is what we have in terms of accounts and our past spending and our data and stuff. And this is what we don't have. At least coming to that understanding is a huge win. Number three, and this one might hit close to home for some of you. We have a yearly marketing budget that we need to spend it doesn't need to perform. This one's a little facetious. I don't think anybody would necessarily say it, come right out and say it, but I can tell you from experience that this happens all the time is whether it be for-profit, non-profit, government, whatever. Oftentimes, or it happens more than we would want to admit, companies or organizations simply have to spend money on marketing in order to get that budget again the next year and they leave it too late it's not really strategized it's not thought about in terms of what do we want this to do it doesn't answer any of my earlier questions and so we put money into the marketplace through maybe we we think oh we've i've heard programmatic advertising is great and let's do that so we make a campaign and it's meant to do this thing and we have high-minded ideals and we put it out there but we don't we don't approach it in a way that it, it answers all our strategic goals. We don't necessarily measure, we don't necessarily look at what we did last year or last quarter or last month to say, okay, what changes do we want to make it better? And so it's, this is a really common thing that I run into. And it's, I would say it's the exact opposite of a best practice. It's again, like I said earlier, before any money gets spent, we really should have a good idea of what we want it to that those dollars to do and how we're going to measure and then how we're going to take our learnings from this going forward, whether it's an ongoing campaign or whether it's a seasonal campaign or a short-term thing, what are we going to take from this to learn going forward? Because we can always do better the next time. All right. Those are common issues that kind of to 
come back with best practices. Now let's talk about what we can do. So I've got a, a four part slide here. So number one is, and, and I'm beating a dead horse with this, but absolutely measure what you can before you are, or as you're in the, the, the process of setting up your next, or thinking about your next campaign, or maybe you're just thinking about your overall approach. Number one has to be, how are we going to measure this? And to my earlier point, sometimes you can't measure it. And that's okay. If we get a good deal on billboards, or if, if, if part of what we do is just like to reach the people we need to reach with our messaging, for example, if the people we really need to get in front of aren't as online as you and I are, and there's lots of different communities that are going to be like that, maybe we have to absolutely go with billboards, bus ads, bus shelter ads, put something in a free newspaper, whatever. But there's always a way to somewhat measure what we're doing. There's lots of approaches. I'll give a kind of a, a, a broad example. And that's, let's say it's one of those situations where it's an offline ad. So we can't measure how many people saw it. We can't measure how many people took the information and came to the thing. But there are still ways to approach that, that measurement. For example, if we're trying to get someone to go to a, a website to get a resource, for example, one of the ways that we can measure the success of an offline campaign is we can spend a few bucks and we can buy a domain or a vanity URL, for example, that is a short, it's memorable, it, and it does what we want it to do. And then we can measure the visits to that URL, for example, or we could ask somebody when they come in to see us in person, if they're not using online, and we can say, where'd you hear about us? That kind of data is not perfect, but it's something. So measure what you can is, I think, crucially important, especially if we're doing online ads. Number two is track your spending. This one seems obvious, but again, this is a problem that I have seen enough times to, to know that it's a pattern for, for a lot of organizations that marketing is not necessarily going to be your number one priority. And that's absolutely fine. Maybe, for example, you are a, a small team or a team of one. And so you have to wear a lot of hats. And so marketing is just not going to be one of your priorities. You have way more important things that you have to focus on. That's fine. Lots of ways to attack that problem. You can set clear parameters around campaigns. For example, if you're setting up a, a what could be a Google search campaign, set a clear budget, set an end date, set reminders for yourself to check in on that and see how it's performing, measure that. Any kind of online campaign, the, the controls are all there. But I think the bigger, the bigger picture here would be if you can't pay really close attention to points one and two so far, it's, this is a definitely a clear opportunity to, to reach out for some help in, in getting this done. This doesn't necessarily mean hire an employee. If you're a small organization, you're not going to be able to, to necessarily use a, the, an employee to their full effect on something like this. Maybe hiring a contractor makes sense or a freelancer, or just reaching out to your local network to see, can anybody help me out with this? I have this problem. I want to set something up, but I'm not sure what I want to do. But tracking your spending is obviously crucially important, not only for budget purposes, but what I really mean here is tracking where your spending is going and what is coming back from that. Number three would be cut, cutting down on waste is something that you absolutely want to focus on. So cutting down on waste, like I said, waste will always be at least a small part, but we can cut down on that waste in some key areas. And it really goes back to points two and one, but especially number one. So a good example of cutting down on waste would be, let's look at what we did last quarter month or last quarter, or even last year, if our budgets aren't huge, let's look at, oh, let's look at a big chunk of data. Let's look at where money went. Let's look at what came back in terms of what we measured. And let's look at the targeting that we used. If we can't answer these questions, again, raise your hand and reach out for some help. Because if you're not sure, that means it might not be doing what you think it's doing. And cutting down on waste means let's measure what, let's look at what we did and let's see if it affected us in the way that we hoped it would. So an example of that might be we're trying to raise awareness of a new program that we offer, for example, and we ran a campaign and we saw flat pickup on the campaign. 
And so we can go back and we can look at that campaign in terms of, okay, did it do what we needed to do? Did it reach the right people? Did they know what they were, we were asking them to do? Did they do the thing that we need to do? Those types of questions. Cutting down on waste can also be looking at how much you're paying for things. For example, that's something I haven't really touched on yet. Really common thing that a lot of organizations do um, when they reach out for help is they will work with the marketing agency, for example, big, small, maybe a contractor, maybe especially in the ads world, whether it's traditional or digital, you might work with a media agency is how most of them brand themselves. I don't brand myself that way necessarily, but it's more the same. Um, look at how your media agency or your media partner or your agency, how much they charge you for what they're delivering. And is it possible to, to get the same results or better elsewhere? I think one of the key things here is, and this is a point that I want to make to, to everyone here is if you are using a contractor or a media agency or an ad agency or marketing agency, and I will say put pressure on them to give you not only reports of campaigns and how they performed, but insights. The value in terms of, like I said, when you run a campaign, whether it's digital or or traditional, you're not only trying to generate the thing that you were supposed to be doing, but you're also trying to generate learnings and insights. And so if they're giving you a report that just contains tables of data and no explanation, demand better, ask for more, because there are always insights, there are always learnings to take forward. And I think that all comes into cutting down on waste. And number four, um, leaving on a kind of a a good note is double down on your successes. And this brings in parts three, two, and one. If you're measuring things, if you're tracking things, and if you're cutting down on waste, you will identify winning tactics, winning messages, winning platforms, winning strategies, whatever. If something is working and there, it makes sense to do more of it, whether it's fundraising or providing services or whatever, double down on it whenever possible. If something's working and it's working because of the work you've done on the measurement side, there's absolutely no reason why you should cap yourself on it because you're doing more of the thing that you're trying to do. Obviously, this doesn't, none of us have unlimited budgets. The idea here is you, this is what you gain if you do all the other points. So I'll leave you with a takeaway because we're running short on time. In terms of something tactical that you can take away from this, a lot of you will know this already, but if you don't, one of the best things that you could do for your organization today um, and start today is see if you qualify for a Google Ad Grant. Google Ad Grants are a program that is offered to nonprofits and charities by Google. They offer $10,000 US a month for search ads. That is huge value. And that's everybody. It's not up to 10,000. It's if you're approved, it's 10,000. Now there's parameters around how, what keywords you can bid on and things like that. You can't go, you can't uh, bid on really common terms like sneakers or internet explorer or anything like that. But if it's related to the service you provide or the good that you do, $10,000 in free search ads every month. And so if you can get this set up, this can be huge value in my opinion, way more valuable than any other marketing tool kind of pound for pound. So hugely valuable to look into. Couple of caveats, you can't be government or arm's length. You cannot be hospital or healthcare organization. The definition of healthcare is a bit muddy. So if you think you might be healthcare, I would say apply anyway. The worst they can say is no. So uh, go for it for sure. You can't be a school, academic institution, or a university. They have a separate education product for that. Again, if you are that, you will figure out where, uh, you'll quickly find where right. that, that product lives. And lastly, you one of the key determining factors is your organization must be verified by TechSoup as a a registered nonprofit or charity. That's the partnership that Google has. So it's got a good connection to our talk today. Obviously, you have to be a registered charity or nonprofit. So where you can learn more about that is simply google.com slash nonprofits. You can also just Google ad grants, screenshot this slide and, and go do that. If you're not, like I said, if you're not doing that already, if you don't know, find out and then go and apply right now, because this is the best thing you can do. And then as you get started on it, on your journey on that, like I said, there are lot, there's lots of help available. You can do it yourself or you can hire somebody or reach out. There's lots of ways to get, to, to get help on that. So that is the talk for today. I didn't leave a ton of time for questions. I, I talked way too much, but I'm happy to, to answer any questions that anybody has. 
Yeah, I just want to ask one question, Matt or Eli. Do you want to go first? So I see that you've recommended the ten thousand dollar a month grant, and you have to go through all those specifics. But yep, what's an organization going to do with that money if they have absolutely no idea how to do use Google Ads, right? Because they're going to have to figure out if they're going to have to hire a marketing strategist, a Google Ads person, a strategist. Like it's one thing to just say that you can get a grant, but then it's another thing to then advocate it and actually do it. And then actually have the ability to figure out how to use it effectively. Because we had a question here in the chat about, or actually Miriam said something about, we've been working with them for months um, and they brought no ROI. So my immediate question was, well, what's ROI to you? And what's, have you clearly defined what the ROI is? Because ROI means return on investment, but it doesn't, like, if you don't have specific goals related to the ROI, then you can't blame the ROI or that there's no return on investment. You're absolutely right. And no, and that's a great point. The $10,000 a month is the, is definitely the dollar associated value. Right, but of right. course, yeah, you're going to need to, you're going to need to invest either effort in terms of uh, somebody you or someone on your team is going to have to try to get up to speed. I think it is Google search is definitely a difficult product for sure, but at right. the very least bidding on your own brand name, for example, plus right. there's oodles and oodles and oodles of things written about how to get started. And then I think okay. What I think is probably the even better value for something like this is for an organization who qualifies for Google ad grants, you can, I mean, apply and then never use it. Absolutely. That's fine. At least you have it available. Should you be working with somebody in the future? But if you were interested in this, but you're thinking to yourself, I don't have the capacity to take this on rather from a learning perspective, or even just do it. I know how to do it, but I just don't have the capacity to, to learn. There are not only Google offers connections with not accredited, but recommended professionals. Those can be agencies or individuals. That's one pathway to go down. Obviously that's going to have a cost associated. There's also in your community, there's definitely somebody like myself, probably like yourself, Ben, who is adept at working with Google search, reach out, try to make a connection with those people. The the money that you will spend on fees to have someone manage it slash set something up you can more than make up for that in the free media that you get every month from Google. So I've seen this work for sure. Right. It's definitely not a one size fits all, but I think if I was going to recommend one thing, it would be Google ads grants. Interesting. And the thing is, I'm not a Google ads expert, though I have, though I am a marketing freelancer. So I can't offer to help organizations. I just know from my own marketing experience. Um, that's why I asked that question. And I mean, I volunteer with TechSoup. I've been here a couple of years. I run the Twitter account. I see all the issues. And I just, unfortunate for organizations, like you're stuck that if you don't do something and you don't spend some money, you're not going to grow and you're not going to change or be any different. But then if you take it on, there's a whole other set of concerns or consequences about now how to manage it and how to, as someone asked, I think it was the lady, sorry, where is she? Miriam, they didn't get any ROI out of it, but that's a whole other set of questions about goals and about what's your ROI. Is it leads? That's, is it conversions? It. If you're a nonprofit, is it donations? Is it volunteers? Is it hours of labor? You know what yeah, I'm saying? I, like, I'd love to, Miriam, if you're able to, uh, just uh, come it, off. I think she's on a... Share your yeah, yeah, no, I'd be glad to elaborate. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're great. Yeah, okay. Um. Yeah, we've been, like I said, we've been using Google ads for about uh, close to a year now, actually. Okay. And we've had professionals working on it to support us the whole time. So we got a great deal because we're nonprofit. We got a great deal on, on some support, some professional Google ads support. And we're only spending about 250 a month on supposedly the top Google ads marketers in Canada. And okay. so far we've made zero and all I all I want it all I want at the moment, like enough ROI for me currently, would just be to pay back the two two fifty a month yeah. that we're right. spending okay. on the marketers. So far, but so far we've gotten zero. Yeah. So. Oh, in how many months? In how many months? It's been about six months, I would say, with them. Ooh. Yeah, six is. What do you think, Matt? Six is long, right? If people give up after two or three months or a month, and you're not going to see much, but. Six months is a fair amount of time. Absolutely. I agree. And this is a really common story, unfortunately. Okay. What I was going to say a few minutes ago was two 45-minute talks over the last two weeks. One of the things I don't think I, I made very clear is none of this stuff is easy. Absolutely not. I'm not going to stand here oh, and no. say, anybody can do this and it's easy and you can do it. No, that's not true. There's a reason why people pay me to do what they do. It's, it's a complex ecosystem of 
measuring things and putting ads out there and optimizing. And then what are you trying to get them to do in the website and things like that? So for in Miriam's example, for, for Miriam's example, that story, just $250 a month, having someone manage it for you, the ROI has been zero. That generated about 12 to 15 questions in my head that I would ask. But I think for anyone who's listening, whether you're in Miriam's kind of situation where you're paying somebody or you're outlaying cash and you're not really sure how to answer it, I would say the first step is to go back to in the Miriam situation. What the first thing I would do is how could, are we hundred percent sure that we're the ROI zero? That sometimes can be a very easy question to answer. If sales from if sales have not gone up and we can't attribute sales, if, if it's, if that's accurate in this case to the Google search ads, then yeah, we're pretty confident in that. Okay. So let's cross that off. The second one is if you're paying somebody to, to work on this and they haven't brought ROI and they also have not been able to sufficiently explain that, then I would say, then you've got a tough conversation ahead of you. I'm not saying to anybody, you know, fire them if they're not providing ROI. That's not at all the case. Sometimes ROI is a long-term project because maybe you don't have the right things in place. For example, on the website to be able to do what you needed to do. For example, you can bring the right people into the store all day long. I use the store in a kind of uh, an analogy, but yeah. as a metaphor, you can bring people in all day long, but if they can't find what they need, or if they can't complete the transaction, or if they can't do what they need to do, well, of course, you're not going to get any ROI. So that's, there's yeah. lots of different explanations for that. So, the, so what I would say to someone like Miriam is go to the experts who are providing you help and say, Hey, it's been six months. We've invested X number of dollars. We haven't seen the ROI. Let's talk about what we've learned. Cause as I said, it always goes back to if we haven't gotten the growth, if we haven't gotten the sales, if we haven't gotten the leads, if we haven't gotten the donations, let's at least learn why we have not gotten that and how well, that so leads us down the pathway to, okay, this is what we can do to hopefully change that. So I, I do, thank you for the suggestion. And I do talk to them actually, every time we have a conversation, they're pretty like uh, slick marketing types of people. So I can't mm -hmm. usually out talk them, but I do try to have that conversation with them every time. And they always just say, we'll try this new thing. We'll try this other thing. So that's what kind of why I worded the question I, the way I did, which is like, what is the expectation? What is the average in terms of ROI for yeah. let, let, let's say a small nonprofit? Like what could you expect for, from Google ads? If they were assuming they were being executed really well, let's yeah. say, if, I don't know, maybe that's a hard, maybe that's a hard metric. I'm not sure. It, it is. This is something that comes up with me a lot with, with various clients, no matter who they are, is benchmarks. We want to know, are we doing well compared to others? And my answer is always very unsatisfying for them. And that's, it depends. In, in, in that case, you really have to make your own decision in terms of what's worth it. Google ads, for example, in this particular case, Google, there's nothing you can do, even if you set up the best ads campaign, Google search ads campaign in the world on something that's firing on all cylinders, that's absolutely got a super high click-through rate and it's reaching exactly the people you want it to reach. But again, the, the problem, and I'm not saying this is necessarily your problem, Miriam, I'm just saying this is a typical example, is that there could be another part of the overall strategy that's not aligned with the Google search part of the, the that Google search as bringing traffic. Google search really at the end of the day, all it can do is bring you traffic. It can bring you eyeballs to the thing. There might be a lot of reasons why people aren't doing the thing you want them to do. Like I said, it may be a technical problem. It may be, we were going after these keywords, but the way that people use those keywords, the way they search, that's actually not the people we thought it was. It's yeah. bringing in traffic, but it's not bringing the right people in terms of our I'll say very broadly, customers to the website. So there's lots of reasons why something like that may or may not be working. So in terms of to answer the question of what would be good, I, I think you're the best person who can really answer that in terms of if you spent if you spent money on an ad and you're selling something, let's say, or you're trying to get something back, whether it's a donation or a sale or something, it's I would probe further into that into saying, okay, if the thing we're trying to sell costs $5,000, the ROI on that's going to be pretty difficult because it's a big decision to make. The ROI per dollar is not going to be super, super high necessarily, but it's like, as long as over time it works out, then, you know, we can call it a success. So there's too many, I think there's too many variables to be able to answer that question for you accurately. I think in the conversations that you're having with the, the marketing folks, 
in terms of they're talking about trying new things. And I think that's great. That makes total sense. But it's for me, if, if I was in your shoes, I would be asking, what's the long-term plan here? We can't just keep trying things and hoping it's going to work. What have we learned so far in terms of why have things not worked? Why do we think things are not working? And do we think that we need to try something else in terms of, is the problem we're not getting the right people? Is the problem that there's a technical problem with what we're trying to do on the website? Getting some feedback and some answers around that, I think might help. Because yeah, like I said, at the end of the day, Google search can only bring you the people into the store. Getting them to convert is usually the much, much harder problem to solve. I think it's also too, Matt, and I had this experience with myself and my own consulting with a client, not a nonprofit, but a painting company. And they want to run Google ads and, and Facebook ads and they keep pushing you to do it. And I'm like, let's go look at your website and everything else because everything else throughout the funnel, it's got to be optimized to take not only incoming requests of actual potential clients, but also that everything on the website actually works. If you got a contact form and you draw on a customer and they fill the contact form and that contact form goes nowhere, then so what? Like, where are they going to go? Like they've contacted your organization, but the contact form doesn't work and it doesn't go to someone's email and nobody knows who it is and nobody knows what's happening. So that, that lead just went out the window, despite the fact that you spent money on Google ads and got them to that point, but then it didn't turn into anything. Yeah, no, that's right. That's a great. So example. it's optimized like throughout the whole piece of, yeah, I got somebody in with a Google ad, but what did you do every step of the way to get them to where you wanted to get them? And yeah. do you have a clear idea of where you wanted to get them? Yeah, that's a, that would, I would say that's a, a very accurate example. I'd say in the case of a form not working, that might be extreme. Yeah, but that, but you understand what I'm saying. hundred percent. Right? And I agree with you. Right. Totally. It's just, it's just, it's one thing to have the Google ads, but if it's not like really clear what they do, it's almost like a buyer's journey or a customer's journey. It's yep. just, they don't, you haven't given them all the right places to go. Hey, to 